just nicked my place. Thanks a lot for that, mate. Please welcome Ben Foster. I feel bad now. <laughs> I saw all your DMs. I was just blanking yeah. them, mate. Basically, Wrexham, seeing if you're interested in, in going to sign for them. They've got Mark Howard. Um, Who's that? Yeah, no, and your honest assessment of what I look like training on Thursday. Chris ND don't welly it like that. Chris <laughs> started calling um, you granddad. You know, you're buzzing with that. You, and he was like, Fossey, man, you know, has made a bid for you. John O'Shea or Rio Ferdinand had to go in goal or something like that. It was John O'Shea. That moment of when the full time whistle went was just the single best football feeling I've ever experienced. Right, let's talk gloves now, right? Yes! <sighs> But that's really poor. Cool. Thankfully, <laughs> <laughs> Joa is probably the best goalie I've seen up close. Luis Suarez had just ripped us a new one on the pitch. Uh, mine, 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 mine. I managed to play in a World Cup for my country. Take it out with me, put it in the goal, and just see what it looks like. Your service is lovely. The sooner you can be comfortable in your own skin of who you are as a person, then you'll be able to be a much better goalkeeper. On this Let's time. go and finish the season off, mate. Damn right, damn exactly. right. Up the town. What a shame from Mark Howard. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Yours Mine Away podcast with me, Mark Howard, and my mate producer Ben. Today we've got an unbelievable guest, my current teammate, just nicked my place. Thanks a lot for that, mate. I'm going to get straight to that. Uh, please welcome Ben Foster. Oh, mate, don't. I feel bad now. <laughs> I had to break the ice with that. It's nice, to, it's nice. It's like, uh, no, thanks for having me, mate. I'm looking forward to this. Um, yeah. I love like talking about goalkeeping. Like the like you say there, you said earlier about it gets geeky, mate. It gets geeky, but I buzz off geeky, mate. Yeah. Honestly, the little tiny, tiny details that I think if you're not a goalie, you won't understand it. But we'll try and explain it as best we can. That's exactly it. Honestly, on this show, that's all we try and get across is that we are different, mate. We we do different things. Better, we're, mate. We're better is what we are, right? We're not, we are different, but we're better. better. No, <laughs> I, I think goalies are like, goalies are, are normally like the, in most change rooms, goalies are the, people say we're mad. I don't think we're mad. I think we're, I think we're just slightly different. We um, we're happier in who we are as people. We're comfortable in our own skin, exactly. and I think that's the big thing that shines through for a goalkeeper. I've spoke about this before. It's one hundred percent. We like working on our own, mate. You yeah. love your cycling because you're so strong mentally Boom. in your own headspace. I can play golf on my own. I'm quite happy to yeah. do it. I sit on the sofa at home, like, and I'm buzzing off it, mate. I love my own company. That's I do. A, I buzz off it. That's an exclusive clip. That. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, I've been trying to get you on a pod for ages, mate. And I've, I've been asking other people to ask. I've been pretty nervous. I saw all your DMs. I was just blanking yeah, them, mate. Yeah, I thought so. Who is he? Yeah. No chance. <laughs> What's that he's doing? <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, clearly what you've done in your career, mate, has been unbelievable and that, but what you've gone on to do away from football and through your podcast and through your channels, mate, one of the reasons why I'm probably sat here now. Oh, mate, thank you. Um, no, I love it, mate. I do. I think um, people always said about retirement, about it's a bit of a shock to the system and you don't know what to do and it's always important to have something good to go and ready to fall back on. Um, and I think if you'd have said to me, even a couple of years ago, like this is genuinely something you'd fall into and, and, and really sort of and, and do, like enjoy as well I'm thinking nah no chance absolutely no chance but off the back of starting the YouTube channel um, getting into that world starting your own podcast it's oh mate I love it I absolutely buzz off it I do there's so many the avenue, avenues that's opened and the things that are available for you to do from it I just oh, they're never ending there's always some way you can go with it somebody you can meet and talk to the podcast you get to do with certain people different individuals I do I absolutely buzz off it mate yeah obviously like I said you're a bit of an inspiration obviously I'm trying to stick within my niche mate I'm not trying to compete I never would do no you do whatever you need yeah. to do mate goalkeeping I love the goalkeeping niche mate I do like I would I would have listened to all your podcasts as well because I love that that data and the details like it's different it is it's really different so when we get if i get a goalkeeper on the podcast they are the easiest podcast to do in the world because i know we're on a level goalies are always on a level aren't they? they they're kind of always fairly sort of similar characters you know what they're thinking you know what they've been through so you can resonate with it dead easily oh, like i said right we're current teammates now right i want to go through this step by step when did you first get the phone call when, what made you come out of retirement Wednesday morning, um, I'd been out on my bike, done a nice little, um, nice little session, couple of hours, lovely jubbly, uh, weather was banging, and um, 
I got back and my phone was on fire, basically, like missed calls and messages and all that. I'm thinking, oh, what's going on here? Um, so, yeah, a load of like numbers that I'd never seen before. So I spoke to Tom, who I do the podcast with, and he was like, mate, we've had um, basically Wrexham have come on and seeing if you're interested in, in going to sign for the, for, the, for the last eight games of the season. And I was thinking, what? And he was like, yeah, well, the goalie got injured in the game at the weekend. Um, they've got Mark Howard. Um, Who's that? Yeah, no, I know you are. I know you are. I do. I do. Goalies know everyone. They, you always know all the goalies, apart from in the quiz later when you're saying who's who and I'm saying he's yeah. not a goalie. Um, but yeah, so, so um, and it was like, listen, there's, like I said, there's eight games left. Um, they're doing really well. They're trying to get the promotion. Um, five weeks of the season, would it be something you'd consider? So sort of sat down, had a little think about it. And I just thought, you know what? It, that kind of works, you know. Wrexham really does work. Um, I've been there before. The last time I was here, 18 years ago, we we won the Aldi V Vans uh, trophy, which was fantastic. That was that was basically the springboard to the rest of my career. So it was that Aldi V final game. It was at the Millennium Stadium, and Sir Alex Ferguson was there watching Darren Ferguson play. And off the back of that, end of that season, I ended up going and signing for Man United. Um, I remember playing in that game actually, and. I saw Sir Alex on the big screen. I saw his face and I thought, oh my God, Sir Alex Ferguson's watching us play. Like mad, absolutely mad. And then about two weeks later in training, Darren pulled me and went, what's uh, what's happening with you at Stoke next season? And I went, oh, mate, I don't know, to be honest, you like that. I'm not going to play. Like, do you know what I mean? There's no chance of me playing. So I'll probably just go out on loan again or something. He went, well, to be honest with you, mate, my dad's interested in signing you. So just, you know, calm it down. Just keep doing what you're doing. Like, and basically don't tell anybody. Just keep it shtum, but keep doing what you're doing because you're doing really well. So Wrexham was a catalyst for your move to United. Exactly that, mate. It was, 100% it was. So, But then I've got to play the remaining sort of, I don't know, eight games left of the season knowing that Sir Alex Ferguson's watching me Tony Coton's there Tony Coton's coming to the games and watching from the stands and I'm thinking oh my god like pressure my god because if you get a move when you were at, like when I was on loan, on loan at Wrexham I was earning like 400 quid a week yeah I was on 400 quid a week and then all of a sudden you're talking about Manchester United it's life changing yeah, mate course. it's genuinely life changing so yeah pressure was on but managed to, to keep it together um, got, similar kind of pressure that we're under now yeah it's it's for a different it's a different, a different end of your reason. Well, a different reason. I spent most of my career the other way as well. So I've spent most of my career where I've been at your likes of your West Broms and your Watfords, where it's every game's a battle. Every game is a you need to be hundred percent on it because you'll lose otherwise. Yeah. And then if you lose, you'll get relegated, and that's what will happen. But you're always fighting against it. So this is a different pressure. People think it's easier at the top, like you're winning games right, left, and centre. But nah, that it still comes with that expectation and that pressure of you know you have to perform because you need them three points badly today. How's the first few days at Wrexham been? Really good, mate. Buzzed off it. Absolutely buzzed off it. You saw me in training on Thursday. Don't lie, right? Don't lie. Give your honest assessment of what I look like training on Thursday. Uh, rusty. Did I look like a goalie who'd been retired for 10 months? Uh, the first few volleys. I thought you were going to say 10 years then, yeah? <laughs> the first few volleys, I was like, oh, he's, he's, he's not what I remember him. Yeah. And then, honestly, I think it was, uh, you did a bit of service. Yeah. And that was wayward. Yeah. Very wayward. Yeah. And then as soon as you got in the games, you just turn on again. Good to go again. Yeah, yeah. it was mental. So like, you did a bit of technical work with us. And I was like, oh, you do look a bit rusty. Yeah. And that, but that's only natural. For sure. And then as soon as you got in the games, it was like, whoa, goalie him. It was, um, so like the first set of volleys and half volleys, it was like, wow, that's coming fast. <laughs> <laughs> the balls normally come this fast. Like, this is really YouTubers fast. YouTubers don't kick it that yeah, hard. I know, yeah. Chris ND don't welly it like that. <laughs> um, so yeah, I was thinking, wow, this is fast. So anyway, I've, I've gone home on Thursday and I'm, you know, I'm driving home and I'm just thinking, Phew, I, hope, I hope I'm feeling good tomorrow. Do like. I pulled you in the warm up and said, Go on. you know, like you was breathing and I was like, mate, I'll slow this down for you. I'll slow <laughs> this down for you because I could tell you was having a blow. Everything, <laughs> mate. Just, I, 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 you forget like the footwork involved in being mm. a goalkeeper is so important, isn't it? Yeah. Footwork makes saves. Footwork makes saves. It's as simple as that. So just getting these quick steps in to get your body into position so you can catch it comfortably. They, like, you, uh, you don't use them muscles normally. They're the little tiny muscles that you don't normally use. You trust your hand and your eyes, but if your feet aren't playing mate, ball. yeah, it's like you're, you're off kilter. So <laughs> something's still over there when your hands are over here um but yeah so traveling home on thursday and i'm thinking poor i'm hope i'm i hope i feel a bit better tomorrow to be honest with you um but yeah woke up for uh, woke up friday morning my body actually felt really good to be fair considering i've been diving around the day before um but just in the training session on friday i'd like to think you would agree with me as well but i felt like my fat hands felt sharper was, mate, i yeah. felt better i felt not i'd say not normal but i felt a lot better 
Yeah, uh, I want to address the first thing, right? Uh, obviously, the manager phoned me as well Wednesday night. It's probably good for some people to hear this as yeah. well, Wrexham fans. But the gaffer phoned me Wednesday night. I'm walking into my daughter's school play, uh, and he's gone, uh, Chomp, uh, got a chance of signing Ben Foster. And I said straight away, just instinct, went, do it. If it gets us over the line, no, do it. Oh, mate, that's nice. Right, And uh, he went, uh, I don't want to upset you. And I was like, gaffer, if it gets us over the line and we get promoted... Don't care. Oh, like, mate. And obviously, that getting to meet you and that and getting to know you now, of training with you and that, it's like an absolute pleasure. But at first, everyone thought, oh, Mark will be so pissed, yeah, yeah, yeah. like proper pissed. And then obviously after, like, you coming in, I was like, if it gets us through, like, through that door, mate, and we get promoted, let's just mate, enjoy that, that so moment. so proper, that is, honestly. That is that so is proper. goalkeeping is about, yeah. though, isn't it? Like, obviously, you, you've been in teams before, been out of teams, and that's what we are like. Exactly. You know, it's all, you know, you're never far away from that phone call. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You're never, you are, I don't care who you are, you could be the most established number one ever. You're never far away from, a few games away from, I'm thinking about getting, or I might get, though. do you it's know what I mean? not what my missus said, by the way, when I told her. <laughs> <laughs> she won't let me say that. She went, what? <laughs> no, I'm joking. Uh, no, that is, a, that's proper. That's um, that's a goalie response yeah. because I guarantee you, I guarantee you that if that's an outfield player, that does not go down like that. I no. promise you it don't go down like that. I guarantee the manager would have been making that call. And it's not a nice phone call to make. Of course it's it isn't. respect, but... Yeah. It's not a, phone, a nice phone call to make, but he knows that you are that guy that would take it in a certain way and you take it well and you know, he knows that you've got the clubs and the team's best interest at heart and like I say, the, there's outfield players who I know for sure would have just flown off the handle gone, ah, it's a load of shit, load of rubbish and it would have been a problem and then there would have been an atmosphere in training and it's just not good for anyone, is it? Yeah, that's why I've, obviously Thursday morning when you came in, I just thought I'd break the ice straight away, yeah. got into you about your pod. So yeah, it's golden, mate. Off. But I love that stuff, mate. So I do. Straight away, I passed on the buck and started calling oh, you, Grand. You know, you're step. buzzing with that. You're so, <laughs> so buzzing. Happy. He's so buzzing because the lads give him a bit of grief about being the old boy and stuff like that. But I, I mate, like every, I've had that for years. I'm used to that sort of thing. I love that. I Decades, do. you mean? Mate, yeah, de- <laughs> <laughs> it's good. It's good. It's good. Uh, but like, yeah, I, it doesn't bother me one little bit sort of thing. I know I'm, I'm like, I'm 40 next week, by the way. 40. That's mad. That. Yeah, but um, no, it's um, no. I've enjoyed the first few days, mate. It has. It's been absolutely class. The lads have made me feel so welcome you especially you've been brilliant like he was in the car we you've got to drive down to the training ground you've got to drive down to the training ground to go and train my it's own like, car score betrayed him got in his car yeah, got he loads did. of grief for mate, it. 25 minutes nice little journey but we didn't stop talking mate because we've just met each other it was like our ears were getting chewed off from each other weren't it it was class it, it was, was just youtube podcast it YouTube was youtube podcast. podcast youtube podcast youtube podcast. but i love that though so straight away i'm thinking yeah boom i like this i'm i feel at home here already because i've got a mate sweet as a nut what do you think of the standard of the lads then? Inc- fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. It's so much better than non-league, National League, and it's no disrespect to National League. It's a League One level. It genuinely is a League One level. The um, the game on Saturday against York, and you, you know, York are a National League team. They are what they are. Then They haven't quite got the budget or the size or whatever of Wrexham, but I'm watching the lads on Saturday and they do it properly like the 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 three lads in front of me the three three defenders just they want to get on the ball they want to pass it out they want to play proper football um and with, head their nan if they had to yeah exactly that they whatever they need to do but they're good like the manager instills that in them yeah, as well does, though he yeah. he's like he, he basically said so i said what what's the style of play how do we play and he went i'll be honest with you he said we don't have a set style of play we play what we see he says sometimes we might say right start the game by putting it long or we might say start the game by this he says but generally it is just play what you see if you want to do it long and you've got a chance to get it over the top and get in behind boom do it but otherwise we'll play football lads we've got good enough players to play football the quality on saturday was brilliant we like i said we won the game three nil but in in like honestly it could have been six or seven it could have been six or seven we were we were so far ahead yeah right enough wreck some loving for now right uh i'm just gonna do a quick fire quiz right catch or parry oh catch always catch tea or coffee coffee uh Play short or kick it long? Long. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Favourite ever goalkeeper? Peter Schmeichel or David Seaman? Yeah, Peter Schmeichel or David Seaman, <laughs> yeah. Uh, best keeper in the world right now? Courtois. New gloves or new boots? New gloves. I've got the same pair of boots I've had for about five years. 
Uh, that's because you're tired, mate. Yeah, exactly. They've been, <laughs> I had to blow dust off them, genuinely. I, I know this answer. Ketchup or mayo? Ketchup. Come on. <laughs> you are the biggest ketchup fan <laughs> I've ever met. You wouldn't believe how many fans of the Cycling GK have met me and given me like a personalised Cycling GK fuzzy ketchup bottle. It is Honestly, I'm talking 20 or 30 different fans. We went out to America. I did a thing in America in, I don't know, four or five months ago. <laughs> and there was two separate different American fans that came up to me and gave me the Cycling GK ketchup Heinz ketchup bottle. It's even got your age on the bo bottle yeah, as well. Yeah, 57 is good. <laughs> you got it's it. so good. <laughs> I like uh, it. Long sleeve or short sleeve? Goalie kits. Um, I, I would take short sleeve, but I would wear an, like a, a base right. layer underneath it. World yeah. Cup or Champions League? Uh, Champions League. All right, last one. Movie or box set? YouTube. Oh, he's changed. <laughs> <laughs> I don't watch any of them. Yeah. Honestly, I don't. Do I, don't watch, I don't watch telly. I don't watch movies. I'll, uh, YouTube, mate. If yeah. it ain't on YouTube, it don't exist. Oh, fair enough, right? So I always love finding out uh, first time you've ever played in goal, mate. Can you remember your first memory of putting on a pair of gloves and going, yes, that's me? Yeah, so I've got two older brothers. And, um, it's always the story. Old brother yeah. bullies you, doesn't bullies they? Bullies me, mate. Get they were in the horrible. garden, you're in goal. You're in goal, and they'd whack them at me. And I remember always just crying all the time because they'd whacked it at me. And I was like, you, you, no whackers. I used to say, no whackers. <laughs> And they just used to whack it because they're dickheads. Um, I do. I love my brothers of class. But um, yeah, that was that was how it first started. Was And I was always one of the tallest in the year as well, or one of the tallest in the class. So, um, And I just didn't like running around. I won't lie. I didn't enjoy it. It was no fun. Um, so sort of settled on the goalkeeper thing. And then I joined... Um, what my, age was you, sorry? I say, I'd say when I first started playing properly in goal, I'd have been 12 or 13. 12 or 13 and my, my friend was playing for I'd never played for an actual Sunday league team or anything like that and then my friend played for a team called Central Ajax and um, they were one of the best teams where around where we live and they needed a goalkeeper so he just said listen do you want to start coming along and you can go in goal and and that was it really um, there was a guy actually called um, Ben Perry um, one of the one of the teammates of there his dad Paul Perry was he used to be a bit of a goalie or something back in the day so he actually started taking me for goalkeeper training when I first started and um he, he, he honestly genuinely he taught me stuff back then when i was 12 or 13 that i still use today no genuinely that i still use today he just taught me the basics basically um but i think i picked it up fairly fast and uh even but even then i was playing sunday league football and i didn't i, I enjoyed playing but i did, never really wanted to push myself i never wanted to play for county or go and do trials for like a like a pro team, pro team or anything yeah. like that I had, I had chances and there were teams that just were, enjoyed yeah i just enjoyed with my mates and having a nice time and like i said there were teams who would approach me to go for a trial or whatever and i just i had no interest in it i really didn't so um yeah because i had i had basically i had a bit of an unconventional way into pro football left school at 16 went and got a job as a chef for a couple of years my mates it was wicked we had a nice time um and i was just playing semi-pro at that time which involved sort of training once a week basically on a yeah. tuesday night or whatever um and that's it it just went from there mate but I, but i genuinely i'd say this to all the young kids as well i don't care I don't care what ability you are. Like, I don't think your body fully matures and makes sense and connects properly until you're about 18, 16 100%. to 18. Your coordination as All you go over. through growth spurts is horrendous. Horrendous, mate, yeah. So, like I say, it, was, it wasn't until when I was about 17 and a half, honestly, that everything just started to click and make sense. And I felt like I was in control of stuff and I knew what I was doing. And then I was playing for this semi-pro team who um, they were kind of two or three leagues below sort of conference, well, as it was at the time. And um, the, the room member was starting that pro teams were starting to watch me and this and that. And, and that was it. It kind of just went from there, really. But yeah, I, I, I think that's a massive message to send to young, young goalies especially. Young goalies especially is don't ever give up on it because somebody is miles better than you by 15, 16, whatever. Because or you that you're too small. Because exactly, you have no that chance. last growth spurt. You exactly. don't know what happens. You've got so much more growing to do. So just stick with it, honestly. Yeah, honestly, when I was going through growth spurts, mate, it was like a piece of wet spaghetti. Yeah, mate. all over the shop. All over the gap. I know. I no coordination my bones hurt yeah people don't actually tell you how much it hurts <laughs> having a growth spurt mate you'll see you'll you'll see it yourself as well you know when you train with the young kids sometimes you're training with the young goalies they might be 18 to 20 or whatever even at that age there yeah they're going through growth spurts right so you'll have one week where you'll see a goal and you go oh he's decent him you know he's only 18 he's only 19 he's decent and so they'll promote him to the first team training for a little bit so he'll train with you for a, for another couple of weeks or whatever and his he will, his form will just go down and you're going where's that goalie i saw from two weeks ago it's because he's training with you he's still learning and growing but he's got all this new information just seeping into his head it's like a golf swing yeah, it is, yeah. you know when you play golf and you pick it 
it up and you're thinking, this is wicked, this. And then you start getting lessons. Someone tells you how to do it. Exactly like, that. And you start thinking about it and you're shanking them here, there and everywhere. That's exactly what happens. I see it so often with young goalkeepers. There's so much to take in. But even like they're going through, the, like their hormones are changing. Yeah. And like they're like developing into a man or a female and they're like going, Christ, this is different. Hard work. Hard work, Trying mate. to turn up to still play footy as well, mate. I know. Uh, from Racing Club uh, Warwick then, got picked up by Stoke. How did that, obviously you said that you had scouts come to the game. What was yeah. the initial first time your dad or someone had a chat with Stoke? So um, there was a, a, a scout came to watch one of the games we were playing. It, there, there was floodlights on and... Um, he, he he was driving home from Stoke. He was a scout from Stoke and he was driving home, but the motorway was closed. So he had to go the A roads, basically. He actually lived near me in Warwick. And um, he went these A roads, saw these floodlights, and it was just queues of traffic everywhere because everyone was getting off the motorway. So he thought, sod it, I'll just stop in and watch this game. I was actually playing for the youth team then of Racing Club Warwick. Um, and I, I was playing for the playing for the team. I was doing doing well in the youth team. I was close to getting into the first team, basically. Um, and he he said, in his words, it was basically, I, I turned up, watched this game, and he said, I just sort of stuck out. I stood out ab amongst everybody else. So he said, I just made a little note of your name, kept a, kept a tab on you. He said, and then um, he said, I saw in some local newspaper or something that the first team goalie at Racing Club got an injury. So I had been promoted into the first team and I had to start playing. So I only had, I only played something like 17 or 18 games for Racing Club, but I did really well, like just straight into the first straight team in. at 17, did really well. Um, and it was at that point that he was just keeping coming back and watching me and watching me. And at that point, he, he was like, no, listen, we need to we need to sort of transfer out. So I remember at the time it was it was five thousand pounds they bought me for from Racing Club Warwick, and they had like clauses in it if I ever played for the first team or something like that. But nothing ever nothing ever materialised like that. And you obviously I uh, I talked to a lot of keepers that have played a lot. Right, the loan system from Stoke, yeah, uh, in your case really benefited you massive. Even the ones where you weren't playing, like Bristol and that, it's yeah, such a big learning curve. Yeah, mate, that's it's not even about the football. Sometimes it's about just leaving home, getting out of your comfort zone, going into a new environment, a new dressing room. It's it's a daunting prospect, but it grows you yeah, up. You've got to go like live in an apartment or something. You've got to learn how to fend for yourself, set up direct debits, bills. Not eat too much in the hotels. Yeah, exactly that. You've got to learn <laughs> everything. Know. Yeah, it's true. You've got to learn. Like You've got to learn about your, your food and your diet and calories and what does what and stuff. You have to learn how to be a professional footballer. And I, I genuinely think I struggled with learning how to be a pro footballer until probably my mid-20s is yeah. learning how what worked for me, what worked for my body, um, what food I could eat, couldn't eat, all that kind of Does stuff. Does that coincide with your own personal life as well, though? Yeah, maybe, yeah. I think um, I think it wasn't until, like, I started having kids when I think I was 26. So when I when I first started having kids, like, it's a busy time. This is, It coincided, actually, with retiring from international duty because I was with England and Capella was the manager, and it's kind of well documented that I didn't really see eye to eye, to eye, to eye with Capello, I just felt. I'll get onto that. Yeah, I just felt. Yeah, I'm sure you've got it in there. I just, but I, genuinely, I just felt like he didn't respect the person enough. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. He, he he had his players, but he didn't see them as people. He saw them as players, what? just somebody to do this, do that, and he never really. He he was never on a level with you. Never personal. Yeah, never personable whatsoever. So never enjoyed the ketchup. No, he mate, he banged ketchup, <laughs> mate, fuming, absolutely fuming. But yeah, the tipping point was when um, I was with England and. I just had my boy actually, Louis, and my wife was going into labour, and I was like, I had to go and see him and say, mate, listen, I've got to go. Like my wife's in labour, and he he literally just looked at his watch and went, "We've got training in an hour," and I'm thinking, "Are you taking the mic? Like, come on, mental. you can't do that. Do you know what I mean?" And yeah. then, so yeah, when anyway, I was like, "Listen, mate, I'm going." So unlucky. Um, so he didn't like that anyway. And then I got a call from him later that day while his one of his um, coaches just saying, "We need you back. We've got a game tomorrow. We we want you to be on the bench and you can play the second half." So I was like, "All right." Cool, I play. Never played me in the game, and that was it, mate. That'll do Done. for me. Yeah, you went off a massive tangent then. I love massive that. tangent. <laughs> massive Where did we tangent. start? Where did we start? I was asking you about your loan moves. From oh, Stoke. loan moves, mate. No, massive. Uh, loan moves are massive. I will say this to any kid out there. Yeah, if you're, it's, you need to learn the basics. And you need to like working with the higher higher quality of goalies and coaches. You can for sure, but the chance to go out and play games, first team games, where it matters, finding out where winning and losing. Exactly, matters. being part of a squad. Yeah, where you know that if you let that team down, they're all going to be affected by it and then all the staff are going to be affected by it that's when it matters mate and that is like i've seen so many goalies who they're so good in training they're brilliant right but even then 
you are not sure if they're going to make it as a footballer or a goalkeeper or not. You're not sure because the difference is when they step over that white line on a Saturday afternoon, have they got that bit of, what's the word, bottle, the metal? Minerals. The minerals. Yeah, literally that, the minerals. Have they got that bit to go, yeah, I'm going to go and do this and I'm going to help my team out every single Saturday? Right, so obviously you've talked already about winning the league, uh, Football League trophy, right? That then led to your move to Man United. Yeah. Uh, you've said how it led about, but what was it like when you actually got that phone call and it was getting done? Oh, mate, it was... Um, so, first of all, I was playing darts in the changing room at Stoke with Carl Henry, right? And um, <laughs> I know Carl. Yeah, I know Carl, yeah. We were playing for money, mate. The we politician. Were, yeah, we were 100% playing for money. And... Um, I, I think I was about like three or 400 quid up or something like that because we, we used to do all sorts like multi-sports we'd do table tennis like, like t honestly table tennis tennis snooker and darts right and Ben's we're giggling right? we're, I've got a story here about Carl I'll tell you after. tell me in a second then yeah I want to hear this bad boy can we show this story yeah, yeah, yeah. alright wicked love that it's clean um, so anyway I'm about 400 quid up but we've got Sky Sports on the telly in the in the changing rooms and um, it came down the bottom Manchester United make approach for Stoke City's Ben Foster um, and and one of the lads ran in and he was like, Fossey, Man United has made a bid for you. And I was like, what on earth? Like, I, I kind of knew it was happening anyway, but I was like, yeah. And Carl is like mid throw. He sort of looks at me and says, if you go to Man United, you let me off the money. And I'm thinking, <laughs> Jesus Christ. I was like, yeah, mate, don't worry. I'll let you off the money. Fine. Um, and then that's, so that's when like it first started rumbling. But so imagine that was on a Thursday or Friday or something. Um, I then got a call from my agent saying, I mate, listen, um, Sunday morning, Man United want you at the training ground to do medical and basically sign the contract. I was like, wow, we. So Sunday morning, bowls up to Carrington. Um, Sir Alex meets us at the door. Do you know what I mean? How good is that though? Like, yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm nobody. Genuinely, I'm nobody, right? They've just signed me from Man United for, so signed from me from Stoke. Stoke for a million quid. I'm an absolute nobody. Played nothing, done nothing. And he's still there to meet me at the door to tour me around the whole training ground and talk to me and tell me how, what his plans for me are. And basically straight away said, listen, you, you're going to go out alone. This season, you're going straight out alone. We've got a few teams that, that you could go to. Watford or Nottingham Forest. Tony Coton wants you to go to Watford because he's a Watford legend and he knows I'll look after you. Um, but we'll see what it is and then we'll just take it from there. Yeah. Brilliant, well, mate. Let me just go back to this Carl yeah, story. Yeah, come on, I want right. this Carl story. So Carl came in with the gaffer at Bolton, yeah. didn't he? And like Carl was towards the end of his career anyway. And you know what you know what it's like, don't you? He, he moans about yeah. everything. World-class uh, moaner. Mate, he's the, the most professional politician I've ever met. He, he don't get angry, does he? <laughs> so anyway, one day we're all talking. I think... Uh, we were talking about Joe Hart and he'd made a mistake for West Ham. And I said something like, oh, it's gutting to see like where he was a year ago to now. Yeah. And he straight away just nibbled at me and went, how dare you say that? Uh, you're, you're a number two goalkeeper in the champ. What? He, he's playing in the Prem. And I went, yeah, he's being serious. Dead serious. So he's gone, uh, and I went, look, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm allowed an opinion. Uh, I said, like, pundits have an opinion. I said, as a football fan, I'm allowed an opinion. I just, it's hard to watch yeah, where yeah, he yeah. was a year ago to, to where he is now. So I, he's gone on this full tangent. He's not getting angry. He's not moving. So I was like, Carl, I can't be bothered to argue with you because I'm either going to get angry and want to fight you or <laughs> like, I'm going to lose this reckon, argument because you you're a you professional. Do you reckon you'd batter Carl? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, damn right definitely, as well. Mate. Goalies are hard, mate. So, <laughs> uh, honestly, this went on for about a week. He kept on saying to me, how, how dare, dare you? you? How dare you? So then I said to one of the other lads, I said, like, I'm done with Carl. I can't be bothered. It's not worth my hassle. So uh, for six months, I didn't die for one of his shots in training. Just let him in. Oh. <laughs> right, honestly. And then it didn't click at all with him. So we're playing 5 0s, he'd score. And he was thinking, I'm a world class finisher here. And then he was taking bets on a Saturday with the lads in the warm up who scored the most. And like Gary Medine went to him, How dare you take money off the other lads? And Carl's going, Don't know what you mean. And uh, he went, shoot against Mark and see if he ever dives. And obviously, I think he's, he's P-rolled one. It's hit me on the foot and gone in. And his head just flew Penny's off. Penny's dropped. Oh, mate, Have a bit of that. He didn't like it Don't one Don't get on bit. the wrong side of a goalie, mate. Goalies he are He hated it. He yeah. absolutely lost his head, We mate. can bear a grudge we can, mate. Oh, mate. <laughs> it, it went on. I, I say it was easy three months. No, like, literally nothing. Never dived <laughs> once, mate. The ball would be, like, hitting me. I'd just walk out the way of it. I was like, this is so petty. And then once I got the nibble out of him, I was then able to speak yeah, to him Yeah, you're golden now, yeah. <laughs> Six months that went on for. Oh, oh, mate, it was ages. And you double know, petty. Oh, it was so bad. You know, like, I look back at it now and I'm like, I shouldn't have done what it like doing? that. I quite enjoyed it at the time. Because right. the lads were cracking up laughing. 
And he was like taking money off the lads, going, "What a finisher I am!" Horrible, so, mate. Horrible. He's good. Like, I like cars. To be fair, I got on really. Oh, he was in my youth team at Stoke. He was, um, but yeah, he was. He was a good lad. Oh, really mate, he lad. had a full-on argument with uh, Philip Murray, a winger for two hours in the shower. Like, neither of them would budge either. Like, both stubborn as a mule. It went on. And, like, everyone's left. And, like, like Phil would put in a group, oh, we've finished now. And you're like, oh, my God. I ain't got time for that. that. I ain't arguing with anybody. If you don't, right, it's fine. Whatever. I ain't, I don't bother me. Right, I want to go back to Man United. Obviously, I went off then. <laughs> I went off then. Uh, Sir Alex then uh, brought you in. Obviously, Van der Sar is one of my heroes. Him and Dave C. Yeah. Man. How good was he? Oh, he was lovely, mate. He was so lovely. Um, I think he, he taught me a lot, actually, Edwin did, to be fair, not just sort of as a footballer, just as a person as well. Do you know what I mean? The way he was able to... Um, he was just like the father figure of that dressing room. Honestly, everybody looked up to him, everybody. So I'm buzzing that he's there first and foremost. Um, but he was just so... Oh, he was so classy, mate. As a goalie, he was a classy goalie, yeah, wasn't he? He was. He was such he a classy had goalie. He had everything, mate. Like, you imagine, right? He, so when he was at Fulham... And he signed for Man United. There were a few eyebrows raised, you know. There yeah. was. There was genuinely he was a few. Thirty six. Thirty six years old, yeah. right? So people were like, oh, it's a, you know, he might be over the hill. For the next four years, three or four years, right? Best there was no goalie, I promise you, in the world no, that could you. have done what he did for Man United. And you're talking about Man United in their pomp, mate. The best. Won the Champions League at 39, won, won mate, the and what a game yet. Everything. He was just, um, no, nah, he was absolutely class. It was wicked. Like, he used to he used to come out for training, and um, he just knew his body, mate. He knew what he needed, and he and he wouldn't overcomplicate it. He'll come out, catch a few volleys, catch a few half volleys. Never even really caught many of them, to be fair. He'd just tap them down, pat them down. He used to love he'd, that one. He'd up. just feel it a little bit sort of thing, and he would go... I'm done, Steely. I'm going to go in, mate. And we would just go, yeah, all right, cool. Saturday, Rolls Royce, mate. Every single Left time. Foot, right foot. Mate, that half volley he had, he was like the pioneer of that, just putting it over do you to Rooney. His bounce as he ran to the edge yeah, of the box. Oh, He'd be yeah. like, like a little, basketball yeah, player. Yeah, and then oh. he'd do that little flick and a. <laughs> And Rooney would just know. He, he the just ball. knew. He knew as soon as Van der Sar's on his bike running, Rooney would just get on one and start going. And everybody's just going, "What's happening? What's happening?" And you knew what was coming. Inch perfection every single time. He would join in with the lads and the uh, like, the outfield lads, and he he wouldn't look out of place. Oh, he imagine. was just, it was beautiful. You know what I mean? You give me the ball, it's like a hot potato, mate. It's like a bomb's about to explode <laughs> on my foot. Day. Yeah, I know. Yeah, and uh, I was like, I was like, what? But he was just part of it. He was just beautiful, mate. He told me a funny story once actually about. Um, um, about Buffon, about Gigi when he was at uh, uh, Juve. Juve, yeah. So he said, um, he goes, yeah, he goes, when I was at Juve, he said, I was playing, I was doing really well. He said, and then end of the season comes, really fantastic, I had a really good year, I'm buzzing with myself. So we go back, go back for pre-season training and like the like the owner, the chairman or whatever calls me in and he's like, listen, um, we're, we're, we're going to sign Gigi Buffon. Um, we're going to sign him for whatever it was, 40 mil or whatever. 40 mil or something. 40 mil or something, right? Um, and he said, but listen, it's not guaranteed he's going to play. I need you two to fight it out, all right? And Edwin's gone... You're breaking the transfer record for a goalkeeper, the world transfer record for a goalkeeper, and you're telling me that I still might play, yeah? All right, good un. He said, so I knew. He said, as soon as he said that, he was like, I knew I've got to get out of there. That's mad. Mad, mate. isn't it? He, honestly, the way that he played in goal was, I used to watch videos on him and yeah. David Seaman all the time about how, like, their composure, their yeah, calm. Yeah, that's it, yeah. And they, he had a different style, didn't he? Yeah, he did, He mate, was, like, yeah. one of the trendsetters, and I think, like, Neuer then went, took that trend yeah, to a different bit, level yeah, sweeper keeper but calm and yeah. composed didn't see, really seem to care like, that is Edwin I think to be fair if you've got to try your best to, best describing word is just so calm and composed yeah. I remember he, someone tried to lob him from like miles away like, it's like the halfway line and he just give it that simple jog back and he like just tapped it down yeah. and picked it up and just I think he then half volleyed up the pitch and, and no like, probably went on and scored it was yeah. like there was nothing mate. even the, man, the manager just loved him honestly he absolutely adored him mate he could have played longer as well you know I yeah. promise you he could have played longer he could have got he could have got another two or three years out of himself I bet you yeah. I bet you right let's go to your successful loan periods then at Watford then uh, first season promoted yeah first season promoted and I loved it it was like I say it was that first season of being properly yeah. part of a team part of something established elite es number one exactly established number one and it was a, it was a good season because we were actually favourites to get relegated that year as well so the year before AD Buford had just taken over at, at Watford and he had managed somehow to escape relegation by the skin of their teeth genuinely um, so signed me in the summer and I'm just full of wow this is going to be a tough year this is going to be backs to the wall Dig in. there's a reason why they sent me there that is literally part of the reason is 
you're going to have a lot of work to do. You're going to have your work cut out. It will test you, but it will be good for you. Um, we ended up finishing third in the league. We won We won promotion via the playoffs, which is a fantastic way to get promoted, by the way. If you can guarantee it, do it by the playoffs because what a roller coaster of emotions. Honestly, it was wicked. Um, and then second season, we're up in the Premier League. And even I remember getting promoted and I remember standing on the the sort of podium thing, taking taking our trophy. And AD Boothroyd was, listen, mate, you need to come back here next year. You're going to have to come back next season. I'm thinking, damn right I am Yeah, as I'll well. do that. Yeah, I've just been part of helping you get promoted. I've got to be there. Um, anyway, thankfully, it all worked out. Got back there for a second season in the Premier League. And even though that season we got relegated straight away, it was just the best thing for me. It was like you playing... player of the year that year But I got well. player of the year that year, playing in the Premier League week in, week out. And like I say, that, that was a proper season of getting pouted. We would be getting pumped by teams, but it didn't matter. I was just... It, I was just enjoying it. That's what it was all about for me, to be fair, was just going out there, no pressure on me, just enjoy it. Make as many saves as you possibly can. Come out for as many crosses. Kick it a mile. Got me into the England team, and it was it was it was huge for my career. That was. Yeah. So when your loan spell finished, and you obviously had to go back to United, but I know you had a knee up, didn't you? Yeah, did my knee, did my knee towards the end of the season. So um, my knee had been hurting for about the, ba- the the best part, probably the last couple of months of the season. Um, but I didn't really think too much of it. It would always swell and stuff, and I'm thinking it's not great. Um, eventually, joined up with England at the end of that season. Went for a scan, and they were like, "Your crucial's gone, mate." thinking oh for god's sake so yeah that set me back massively mate that was that was about an eight monther so after the two seasons having a flyer yeah to then get that how mentally tough is that oh really really tough so it was that it what made it even worse as well was the end of that premier league season with watford that i did really well like say got player of the year um i was going back to man united and it was the one tiny little period in van der sar's Man United career where he had a little bit of a sticky patch he had a little sticky patch just towards the end of the season like about a month or so and then he played I think it was the FA Cup final he, he sort of semi made a, a mistake in that game as well and there don't, was I don't believe he never made one, I know mate. honestly like this you, you won't find many of these like errors from him because he very rarely made one but this is the tiniest little sticky patch he had and there was a lot of rumours circling around of I would genuinely be challenging him sort of thing. And I'm thinking, there's no chance I can challenge Edwin. But it's Edwin van der Sar. Like, there's no disrespect in nah. that. You know what I mean? He no, is the man. It's as simple as that. So, but anyway, it gets in your head a little bit. You start to get a little bit carried away or whatever. But then you get the told the news that you're out for eight months. It's like, oh my God, back down to earth with a bang. Um, but got through the rehab, did it all properly. And it was a case of, again, where I hadn't played football for eight months. And then Edwin van der Sar went and got injured in a game. Thomas Kushak came on, got sent off in a game. John O'Shea or Rio Ferdinand had to go in goal or something like that. It was John O'Shea. That's it, John O'Shea, yeah. And then, so they're both out. They're banned, yeah. They can't play in the next game. And I hadn't, I had literally trained for about four days, four or five days or whatever. And they were like, Sounds familiar. "Um, Yeah, there you go, yeah. (laughs) Same thing. They were like, Ben, there's a chance that you're going to be playing on Saturday against Derby, away at Derby. And I'm like, I've, I've, I haven't played, I haven't trained, I haven't done anything. Do you know what I mean? Um, I was literally just, I'd literally just started training just to make sure my knee was feeling good and that. So it was kind of a bit of a fast track back into it. But um, yeah, I was sort of slung straight in, um, and I, I had to play away at Derby for Man United. So that was my Man United debut there. But it all went so well for me. I think one we, nil, had, I think we won the game one 0 I made a couple real nice saves early doors in the second, in the first half. Sorry, um, and it, it did. It just went really, really well for me. So I was just like, ah. Absolutely buzzing. I'm back. Good to go again. Knee ballooning after. Oh, not? yeah. All over the shop, mate. <laughs> Killing again. Absolutely. Yeah. I don't care, though, mate. I've just got that much ad- adrenaline in my uh, body. I want to talk about your Champions League debut as well. Yeah. Way at Parkhead. Cough, yeah. That was some atmosphere yeah, there, Yeah, that's what mate. I was going to ask. That was some atmosphere there. Um, that is, I would say, there's, there's two atmospheres that have genuinely scared me. Genuinely scared me, right? Parkhead is one. They... Um, Graham Stack so Graham Stack right tells this brilliant story but when he used to play for Hibs and he says and we would play against Celtic and he said there was one game in particular where we were winning 1-0 right and he said you got, we were just about to tick into the 90th minute right he said I knew he said honestly I knew that we were going to lose the game <laughs> <laughs> we're 1-0 up yeah away at Celtic and he said and I knew we were going to lose the game he says because them Celtic fans 
they suck the ball into the goal. Yeah, they are so loud and so scary. He said, and I could see all my teammates, they were shitting themselves. Absolutely shitting themselves. They're one nil up and they should be going, no, nah, come on, as we can do this. He says, we ended up losing the game 2-1. And he says, genuinely, the fans are what made them win that game. They were just, it's like, they, it couldn't be helped. It was a force of nature. It was going to happen. So Celtic is one of them. And then away at Besiktas, oh, who played wow, in the Tampa, Champions yeah. League for, for United, away at Besiktas. And that is just like pff, ferocious, just animals. They are so passionate, so mad for football and especially when Man United are in town it is like they are getting double giddy um, but yeah that was just bonkers mate absolutely bonkers so I, when I was in Scotland I played up there for five years I was like early on in my career and now I've got to, and this is not a top trump story right so <laughs> I see your story and I'll raise you yeah <laughs> honestly so I was at St Mirren at the time uh, and I'd start I think I'd started the season uh, I'd maybe had one sticky game and the manager pulled me and went look Going to rest you for Parkhead away. Um, Chris Smith's going to play. Yeah. Massive Rangers fan. Probably means more to him. So he'll go out and just, it'll be a different atmosphere and he'll be used to it. So I was like, didn't like it. Yeah, of course. Accepted it. Lost 7-1. Oh. Right. So then I got back in the team anyway. We finished the season quite strong. Uh, I moved to Aberdeen the following year. Mark McGee in charge. Started the season. Uh, got to Parkhead away on the 12th game. Mark McGee pulls me and went, look, you're only 24. I'm not going to play at Parkhead away. Nah. Uh, so he puts Jamie Langfield in goal. Was 31, 32 at the time. Yeah. Been at Aberdeen for years. Uh, game go, goes at 9 nil. Oh, mate, you're buzzing. You missed on that one then. 16 <laughs> 1 on aggregate, man. <laughs> and all the manager could say to me afterwards, did you a favour? <laughs> like, <"Nah." laughs> Cheers, boss. <laughs> Mental. <laughs> I was like, oh, no way. Oh, right. There's not worse that is, though, when it you watch horrible. it. Like a 9 niller, especially. You're watching the goals go in and you're just going, oh. Oh, it was horrible, oh. mate. It weren't nice. <laughs> no. Right, I'm going to crack on with our quiz. Right? I'll give you a little brief. Yeah, goalie on, or no goalie. All right, come on. So then. five international goalkeepers, all played recently. Yeah. Uh, and uh, five just made up names or people you might know. You never know, mate. All right. Could be a few curveballs in there. So head over to YouTube, uh, follow our leaderboard online. Um, you ready? One point for each answer. You answer goalie or no goalie. Cool. Right, number one, Abel Tesfay. Goalie. Not a goalie. <laughs> you think the weekend's a goalie, mate? Is his name Abel Tesfay? Uh, yeah. I haven't got a clue, mate. I ain't yeah. got a clue about music. Real name, the weekend, mate. <laughs> Damn, he's cool as you like as well. Yeah, exactly. He, that's why he said his name, mate. Abel Called Tesfay. Called the weekend, he's loads cooler. Sorry, Abel. Right, number two. There he is. Go on, Abel. Right, number two, Ian Wilson. Oh, I've got to say goalie. No goalie, man. This is dog shit. <laughs> Former world champion rower that invented the Watt bike. No chance. You should know that, of all people. No, I'm Garmin, mate. I'm sponsored by Garmin through and through, all right? I'm not a Watt, gu Watt bike guy, okay? Not anymore. No, we, talk, we, do, we do Garmin tax Neo bikes. That's all we do. We don't do the Watt bike, all right? right. Brand loyal to you. Zero for two, Ben. It's not, start. It's it's so not great. Sticky, I don't think I'm going to be top of the league. Right, number three. Omri Glazer. I've got to say goalie because I've said goalie. Law of averages. I've, go I've got to go law of averages. He is a goalie, mate. Israel and no. HB Shiva goalkeeper in Israel. I knew this. I knew this. I knew this. Right, now you're off and rolling, right? Number four, James Mies. Oh. He sounds like a goalie to me. They all sound like goalies, mate. That's Jimmy, Jimmy Mie Mies. James Mies. Goalie. No goalie. Twat. The Philadelphia scientist that invented tomato ketchup. Shut your mouth. Your boy. You there put some is. proper good research into yeah. these ones. That's really nice, yeah. that, mate. I do. I appreciate these ones. That's your boy, then. I owe a lot to him, you know. Yeah. I do. I owe a lot to him. What would you do without him? Oh, maybe I'd have to have mayo. <laughs> Ugh, no chance. <laughs> Right, number five, Pavel's Steinbers. Right, there's, there's no way you've done four non-goalies, so I'm going to say goalie, just on law of averages. He's a goalie, mate. 37-year-old Latvian goalkeeper that plays for RFS. Put a tash on him. Look at that, 37. That mate, he looks so old compared to me and you, you know. We look a million compared to him. Wow. Compared to you. I'm only joking, Pavel. <laughs> I'm only joking, Pavel. You look great, mate. Right. You look good to go. Number six, Santiago Mele. It's a goalie. Sure? Yeah. All right. 
Uruguay and Union Santa Fe goalkeeper in Argentina. Goalie. Bosh. On a roll now. Number seven, Anantoli Trubin. He's a goalie. He is a goalie. Oh, no. Ukraine and Shakhtar goalkeeper. I think mate. I might have heard of him before, actually. Yeah, England did play Ukraine the other day. Is he play. the one that played? Yeah. yeah. That's where, maybe where I heard yes, it. Probably. Then. Yeah. <laughs> if you had to watch the game. <laughs> Anatoly. There you go. Nice. Number eight, William Gallagher. No goalie. He is not a real goalie. He is actually Liam Gallagher. Is it? Yeah. William. Why is he... What, why would you change from that to that? Go extreme, at least. You know what I mean? Go right. to a nice sounding name, not Liam. Oh, he's just took it from the Will bit. Will, Liam. Oh, yeah, that's nice, actually. He's just shortened his just name. Shortened just his made name, it easier. He's either gone for Will or Liam. It's like my middle name's Anthony, but I prefer Tony. It's yeah. the same sort of thing. Yeah. I don't prefer, I don't care. I'm only joking. You've had him off for his name. He's just shortened it. <laughs> he has just shortened it. He's just <laughs> taken the Will off. <laughs> Sorry, mate. Yeah. Right, number nine, Pedro Galis. He's not a goalie, him. Eh? He is a goalkeeper for Peru and Orlando City. He looks cool as you like as well. I bet he's got a spring to die for. Heck yes, he looks double cool. Yeah. He can kick his legs up and make a save. You know it. Make it look a, a lot better than what it was. <laughs> I ain't got that in me. <laughs> right, number 10, last one, Horton Smith. He's not a goalie. He's not a goalie, mate. With the Masters coming up, he was the first person that ever won at Augusta. Oh, was he? Yeah. Nice. That's my era, that. No, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, you had posters yeah. of him on your wall, didn't you? He was you? in the year below me at school. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> nice, mate. Six out of ten. I'm taking that. Yeah, you're happy with that. I'm well yeah. happy with that, yeah. yeah. Nice. I got off to a shaky start, yeah. but, you know, came back strong. I did throw a few curveballs and put two non-goalies straight off the bat. I like the catch-up one, though. The catch-up one was good. Mays. My boy Mays. Yeah, he's James Mays. 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 Yeah. <laughs> what film's that off? Yeah, Grown Ups. Uh, couple, uh, what's it off? It's not Grown Ups. It's the Adam Sandler film where uh, Rob Schneider as their older partner and they put Mays on everything to heal it. What? Have you not seen this film? No. I've ah. seen all the Adam Sandler films. It's on. It's in Grown Ups too. You know when they go. Oh, to... yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. I like Grown Ups too. Yeah, yeah. Rob Schneider's got yeah, the, I love the older. Rob Schneider, yeah. yeah. Me. Oh, I don't know that. Huh? Yeah. I can't oh, remember that film. bit. Gonna go and watch that now. I love them. Films. I love Adam Sandler films. <laughs> right. Uh, let's go back to football then. So moving to Birmingham uh, for a season, trying to help them stay in the Prem again. Yep. Uh, obviously, yourself, it went quite well for. Not for the club. No, it didn't. No. Um, Another it, player this season it, award, it, by it, the way, just ticking them yeah, off. Yeah, it was. It was. I loved it, mate. I did. I absolutely loved it at Birmingham. Um, it, was, it was. So I got to move home eventually as well, because obviously when you're playing for Man U, you, I was living up in Manchester. I'm from the Midlands. I am. So to come back to Birmingham was just a no-brainer for me. I remember. I remember the boss, Sir Alex Ferguson, calling me into the to the office to say, "Listen, mate, it's not really worked out for you. You know, we've we've accepted a bid from Birmingham for you. Um, you know, what are your thoughts?" And I straight away, I was just like, "Yes, boom, thank you. That that'd be brilliant." Um, so it was a no-brainer for me. Um, got to move back home, back to the Midlands, and straight away, just I could tell it just fit me. It did. Birmingham just fit me really, really well. Enjoy, really enjoyed playing for the team. Like I say, on the pitch, it personally went really well. I, I loved it. Like I say, we got Player of the Year, fantastic. We went and won um, the the League Cup against Arsenal. That was the that was the big one for me because that was still, like I say, I've, you know, making England debut is always one of the proudest moments of anybody's football career. Um, but winning that League Cup is still the one moment. The one little bit of like if you could bottle it and inject it into yourself sometimes that moment of when the full-time whistle went was just the single best football feeling i've ever with experienced that group as well. with that group as well massive underdogs didn't didn't deserve to do anything like that but we went and did it because we were a team of mates and we enjoyed working hard together we might not have had the quality of other teams but we enjoyed working hard and doing it properly and that's what saw us over the line on that game um but yeah it was tinged, like i say tinged with sadness really that we went and got relegated and birmingham never really got back to that level since then as well yeah and then you moved to West Brom yeah uh, love that again it was another easy one mate really really tapping. easy so yeah it was it was a tap in it was um, the, so Birmingham was struggling to pay the wages getting relegated is a massive problem for teams like that so um, especially your wages yeah my massive wages Whoa. yeah god no goalies don't get paid big money what are you talking about no chance <laughs> 
Um, anyway, so uh, we, yeah, I got the I got the chance to go out on loan to to Watford for the first season because, like I say, they couldn't afford the wages, but they were still hopeful of getting promoted back straight away. So they said to me basically, listen, you go out on loan this season at West Brom. Um, it gets you to play Premier League football again, and if we can bounce back to the Premier League, you can come back and you're back in the Premier League with us. And I was like, cool, suits everybody. They never ended up getting promoted again. Like I say, they haven't been back since. But a signing for Watford uh, for West Brom for that first season, it just again went really really well for me absolutely buzzed off it loved it there um playing in the premier league part of a a real nice team as well roy hodgson was the manager and he's top as well i loved roy hodgson uh loved playing for him and the the lads that we had um they they, they we all stuck together for quite a long time as well for a good few years and every one of them became proper friends for life were you as there well. for what six years 220 games yeah, later. Se- seven years in total it was but that that will always be my team. Do you yeah. know what I mean? West Brom will be the team that I probably will hold closer than any of us. Could you just being back home and yeah, yeah, being and settled. Being settled. The kids grew up go into the games all the time. They become West Brom fans. Um, like I say, we had we were one of those teams who probably a middle middle Premier League team, but I think we always we always slightly over overachieved. I would say because of how good our lads we had. They made a they did it properly. You know they they've done it in the Wrexham style of finding out about players before you sign them. They will make sure that they, due diligence that due diligence, man, which I think is so important and it's so often overlooked as well. Um, they would find out about a player down to the tiniest little detail and he might be the best player in the world but if he is a whopper he won't be signing it's for you for it's as simple as that and they did so well at doing that because that was what got us over the line and that was what would win us games that we probably should have draw and they would have drawn us games that we probably should have lost so that was that was massive for us yeah you picked up a few more awards mate i'm just going to keep yeah, mentioning them just yeah. make sure you get your credit from no i enjoyed it like i say it was good it was good i mean i'm playing first team football i'm playing in the premier league week in week out with a bunch of people who i enjoy playing with it was just so easy for me to do yeah the football writers one as well Football writers, plumbing. Now, what was that? I don't even remember that. I've got it down here as football writers, footballer of the year. I've also got uh, player of the season, fans player of the season. I won a few bits and bobs. Yeah, Yeah. it was nice. Yeah, the cabinet's uh, looking uh, nice. That's not like honestly that sort of stuff that I'd never even look back on or think of or be bothered of. And like even when I remember when I left Man United and I had friends say to me, "Yeah, but." Won't you regret leaving them because they'll they'll go and win things and you won't win so much stuff? And I'm thinking, no, that don't genuinely don't bother me, mate. Honestly, I, as long as I'm playing for a team that I enjoy doing it, then your rest of your life looks after you itself, doesn't it? Do and you know gets what I mean? the most out of you as a person. Exactly that, mate. If you're happy, you'll you'll put in better performances. Right, straight back to Watford, then. Yeah. Uh, obviously, the, you spent a good period of time there before you did retire. Yeah. Stacky, talk to me about Stacky. Oh, bonkers, mate. Stacky, so Stacky was three years above me at Arsenal when yeah. I was coming through, mate. He was like my inspiration. Yeah. Better outfield player than a goalie as yeah. well. Unbelievable he, feat. He, he was a proper goalie, by proper the way. Proper goalie he was a wicked well. goalie, mate. He could be playing now. He yeah. could still be playing he now. Could. He's a specimen, by the way. He is mate, shredded. His physique. Shredded. It's a joke. Yeah. A joke, mate. How I does think he do that? I think he's 41 or 42 now. He is incredible, mate. And he he would still join in with the with the goalie. So when I was at Watford, he would be the he was the academy goalkeeper. But every time a manager got sacked, which was quite often, um, the the whole coaching staff would go as well. So he would have to come in and be the goalie coach for a week or so until a new one has come in. Um, but I loved working with Stacky, mate. He is a wicked goalie coach. He's you know? a mental cat as well. Mental cat, mate. Bonkers. I've had. Have you had a night out with him before? Yeah, I have. <laughs> trouble mate he's so, yeah. trouble so obviously like I said I used to look up to him but yeah. I used to go out in London every now and then with him I couldn't do it mate they no, trouble. I did it once I think I was like nah it's not for me hard man. work he is a proper goer mate he will get on it and then he'll get up the next morning right as rain good go to again. go again mate I've yeah. seen him and uh, Anthony Stokes in a club in Scotland once mate doing <laughs> naked press ups mate I was like nah in the middle of a club not bothered mate yeah that sounds about right mate that would have been about 7 o'clock at night as yeah, well yeah exactly that was early doors yeah mate. it would have been nah he was, I, Watford mate I loved it I did I Again, absolutely loved it. A bunch of lads that I enjoy playing with. Um, again, genuine friends for life. Um, it was, it was nice. And I got to admit, leaving West Brom was a big problem for me. I didn't really, I wasn't looking forward to doing that. I'd never thought I would do it, but the chance to go and play Premier League football again, it was something I just couldn't turn down. Um, so now I made the made the move over to Watford. And I've got to say, those last the last four years, I don't know if it was my most enjoyable. But it would have been up there. It was it was brilliant, mate. I Is absolutely that, loved it. Because you know you're coming towards the end. Yeah. You make the most of every day. See, like yeah. 
I'm 36 now, Foz, but I still buzz off. Yeah, it. I've yeah, still got yeah. that bug to turn up and do better every yeah, day. Yeah, and yeah, Get around the lads and be right involved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That I think that might have been what it was. To be fair, mate, I think I was at a stage in my life where I was just so content, so happy, so again comfortable with my own skin, just happy with who I am. I didn't care. Like nobody could have me off because I'm unoffable. I swear, I don't care. <laughs> Nothing bothers me. It's cool. Have a nice time. Um, so yeah, we did. We just had a nice time. We played some serious football as well. The team that I signed for originally was under Javi Gracia and we finished we were basically after the first four we won our first four games of the season so we were joint top after four games um, at Christmas we were like fifth or something like that um, we were just a really really good team mate Jerry, Jerry Delafeu oh. uh, Roberto Pereira Abdullah Decore, Etienne Capu, um, Troy Deeney up top, just an absolute Animal. beast, a menace he was. Um, and it was it was so good, mate. We were just turning teams over, genuinely. Right, let's talk gloves now, right? Yes! <laughs> this is Matt Smith, and this is the Glove Review on the Yours Mine Away podcast. Here we go, right? What size are you first? Nice and simple. I don't know. I don't you know. must know. I do not know. Sousy You've has got been someone s- that does that for Sousy. you. Sousy. Well, Sousy, yeah. yeah. Sousy's been sending me these these gloves and nothing has changed for the last however many years, mate. They send them me. I wear them. It is simple as that. I've got nothing to moan about, nothing to complain about. They won't have about. the size on them, mate, because you've had your straps personalised, haven't you? So I, they think, won't have the size. I think they might be uh, 10 and a half or 11. They are 10 and a half. Then. Yeah, I think they're 10 and a half or Looking 11. Uh, how long have you been with Celsies? Oh, forever. Yeah, exactly. Forever. No I remember. One leaves them. If you get the opportunity to wear cells, you no, never leave. Mate, I um, can't let go of it. I remember when I was um, when I was at Man U. When I was signing for Man U, um, I was out on loan at Watford. And I was doing really well, and I was wearing Sal's gloves. And Knight came in and offered me a contract to wear boots and gloves, and it was a decent contract, genuinely a decent contract. And I was so close to signing it, mate. I mean, like um and Aaron, and they were schmoozing me. I was buzzing off my the <laughs> nice Nike yeah buzzing and I was so close to doing it and then honestly I went to bed one night and I just I woke up the next day and I was like I can't do it can't I just t- can't do it can't let Uncle Sales I down I can't do it because you need to be a goalie yeah you got to be a goalie to understand how much these mitts when they're on your hands in a game in big pressure moments how much it means to you and how much when you know you've got the best stuff on your hands... The faith you've got in the them. The faith in them. When you know they're tried and trusted and you've played in them and trained in them so many times, you haven't got to worry about that. And I knew that's what I had with these and and that's what it was. I just, I just couldn't do it because I couldn't trust that when I was playing on a Saturday afternoon in the Premier League and I've got a glove on that's a little bit foreign to me, that will that will change everything. Genuinely will change everything. Uh, do you ever get them custom built to you? Have you had specifications? I remember watching a video of you sewing your fingers together. Yeah, sewing my fingers together. So um but even that, like they they said they said they could make them for me where that middle bit there would have been Yeah, so it'd have been a joined big sort of index finger and middle finger. But I actually quite enjoyed just sewing them together, to be honest with you, mate. Like it didn't bother me. It was something to do on a Friday morning before the game. Um but then eventually I got to the point where I just actually put tape over the over two the of them. And it, again, it didn't bother me. It did was fine. The job. Yeah, it did the job. These are, mate, I've got to, like I say, I'm, I've, I've, I'm not sponsored by Sal's anymore. Like he just sends me gloves. But they are, for me, the best gloves ever made. Genuinely. Why, why do gloves smell so good? Oh, that is just, hold on. <laughs> <sighs> God damn. I so swear, good, if it? my bed sheets smelt like that, right, I would hit the, the deck and go ever. to sleep instantly. And that's soft. It just reminds me of, I don't know what it is, actually what it reminds me of is warm, soft and just comfy. That's what it reminds me of, that smell. If you could put that into my car as an air freshener or something. Oh. Is it always roll fingers you've worn? Always roll fingers. Um, yeah, I've, I've like tried and tested a few different bits and bobs and negative cut and all that kind of stuff but nah mate I'll always come back to this that for me is just the the best best glove and every time you know honestly every time he brings out a slightly new model a newer model of some sort I will not it, it for me it's just I don't know how you can improve on them now. You just put them on, they fit like a glove. Mate, they're, they? they're good to go. I don't know how, I, I genuinely say to him, mate, I don't think you're going to improve these. Yeah. I don't think you can. There's nothing better than them. And yet he'll bring a new model out and he'll say, this has changed, this has changed, this has changed. I'm like, they feel incredible, mate. They always yeah, do. They and always. that's all I need to know. So old thank trusty, you. Old trusty, isn't it? Yeah, old trusty, mate. They are. They're the best. Uh, have you got any, uh, I want to know your pre-match routine with your gloves. A lot of people yeah, ask this sort nice. of stuff, right? So, do you wear a brand new pair of gloves in a game? Do you break them in for a week, one day? What is Mate, it? I've got the pair of gloves I wore on Saturday are the <laughs> pair of gloves that. I 
I think I might have worn them in the last game for Watford. That's I, mad. Yeah, I think I wore them in the last game for Watford about 10 months ago, right? And they've been in a box ever since. I've done a few YouTube videos um, with them in between somewhere, uh, but they've just been in a box at home with all my boots and stuff like that. So I trained in there. They were muddy as heck, weren't they? Yeah, like they were. dried mud, yeah? So I trained in them on Thursday. <laughs> Um, and then I forgot to wash them, so I was gutted really. And but then Friday, so Friday, I got I got into training. I um, I wore them again in training, and they felt they felt fine. The latex on these don't mess about, mate. Honestly, they is still top even after that time. So I finished <laughs> training on the Friday, um, straight back to the the stadium where we get showered, and I will I will go into the shower with my gloves on. Oh, 100 percent. You got to wear them in the shower without doubt. Yeah. So I will put on no matter what the shampoo is. I'll, I'll wash either with shampoo, soap. shampoo, not with soap, shampoo, shampoo or shampoo shower gel whatever's there yeah. whatever's there shampoo or shower gel doesn't wow. bother me that's so amazing. i will i will put them in make sure they're soaking wet sodden wet and then that's when i'll squeeze a massive dollop of like say it could be mint sauce or whatever it is whatever it is you know the impi- whatever it's called yeah that that one that makes your bits tingle that one yeah so I'll, even if it's that i don't care mate as long as it's like soapy and we'll get it all going that and then i'll give them a proper good wash good clean and then i'll just hang them up on my peg yeah. and and i don't want them fully dry for the game you need I, that moisture. I need them. a bit of moisture. I need them damp still. I don't want them soaking wet, but I want them. I want them damp still when it comes for the game. At Do you know, I love washing them and then rolling them up in a towel and then standing on that. Towel yeah, squidging them a bit. Yeah, like, I think they're bang on, ready to go. Good then. To, they they probably would be to be fair. Like I say, I think if you laid a towel down, put the gloves in them and rolled, rolled them up, up mate. and rolled it and, and rings it. Stand on it. Yeah, and oh, I love they'll it. be good to go from that moment yeah. on. Yeah. How, how important is it for young goalkeepers to look after their tools? Oh, without doubt, mate. But, mate, these are expensive gloves, you know. Yeah. These are really expensive gloves, but this is why I think investing in a good pair, a solid pair, and then looking after them properly. Don't go and put them in the washing machine, by the way. Oof. Do not put and them in the washing machine. Never put them machine. on a radiator. Never put them on a radiator. Never put them in a tumble dryer. Don't do that, yeah? Do not let your mum just go and chuck them in the washing machine. It'll ruin them. It dries the palm out. Yeah. So you see that latex on there? It's like, I don't know if the camera can pick this up, but it's kind of, it's glistening, yeah? Yeah. Can you see it? It's like a little bit shiny and glistening, yeah? And that's like, it's like a juicy palm, yeah, right? It is, yeah. The washing machine, it's like it's too hot or it's too, the detergent's it too harsh. Right out, it takes it out and that, it, it becomes dry. And then when it gets dry, it genuinely loses its grip a little bit. One thing I do as well, though, in games is, um, you might have seen me doing it on Saturday or in training, is I will kind of scrape the floor a little oh, bit. Oh, you've got to rub studs. the floor? Yeah, gr- gr- like I'll scrape the floor a little bit, get a bit of fresh, like muddy kind of whatever soil, and then I'll wipe my gloves in it a little bit. And I just, it definitely does. It adds a bit of friction to Conditions it. Conditions your gloves Conditions that. to it, yeah. But have you seen the thing that people people have been doing with Vaseline as well. Yeah, so I've talked about this on here before. Even uh, at the World Cup, the, yeah. the Holland goalkeeper did it. He had yeah, a massive yeah, yeah, dollar massive throughout the game. Yeah. It's a thing though, mate. It, it works, mate. Mate, that- you've got to you've got to commit to it and you've got to make it that's what you do because I dabbled with it. I remember at the World Cup, actually, Joe used to do it. Harty used to do it. He used to, um, because we were playing with those Adidas balls and those they are, <laughs> Ma- bastards is the what Jubilani. they are they are bastards it weren't Jubilani. I'm not that old alright um, <laughs> but it was the one after that but either way it's an, if it's an Adidas ball it's a bastard yeah. simple as that yeah they're, they're horrible so they are quick. Dis- they're built for scoring goals yeah, they're yeah. not built for goalies right so even even the Champions League balls same thing yeah you try and grip it they're not grippy they're slippy they're slidey they're horrible balls like right? plastic coated plastic they? coated they're absolutely horrible so he used to mess about with putting Vaseline on his hands and I remember he would do in training and sometimes the ball would come up at me and I was like, what on earth is on this ball? Transfers yeah, to your gloves. Yeah, it transfers all around the ball as well and it transfers onto my gloves. And I'm going, what is this? But because I didn't have actual Vaseline on my, it wouldn't work for me. It wouldn't help me. But he was like, nah, I promise you, Ben, it works. I swear to you, it works. I couldn't get behind it, to be honest with you. It's yeah. not for me. It's not for me. But I think there is something in it for sure. Any other superstitions you have with gloves? Um, and pre-match rituals. Th- I'd do. say I'd say the only superstition I have is actually on a match day I won't let anybody really touch them. To yeah, be honest, with you. they're yours. Yeah, they're mine. If you put it on, it's a problem. Yeah. Like if if somebody just came and put it on whilst I'm there, whoa, I would be like snatching it off on that ain't a thing. Yeah. Um, but no, other than that, it's it's fine. To be fair, normally what I what I used to do was I'd give I'd wash them on a on a Friday. Um, I would make sure they're sort of semi damp and then I would give them to the kit man and I, I would basically have to I'd have to have a conversation with him initially and say listen I'm trusting you with these now yeah you need to not just stick them on top of the boots so it's transferring mud and shit to them and stuff I'm trusting with you to 
put them in like maybe a little bag or just keep them a bit separate from you know, everything you else. You know the little polythene bag? Yeah, you there you go. Them, oh, I'll slide there them back go. in yeah. there. They'll stay that because little bit it of keeps damp it moist, the humidity. Yeah, it keeps it moist. The humidity keeps it, like not enough air can get into it or something. That's perfect. Yeah. That would do perfect. But I'm trusting him at that point to look after him, after them. And But he will do because it's, it's like any other item of kit. He knows that if he loses them gloves, that it's trouble. He's responsible. It's yeah. trouble. And he will always have two spare pairs of gloves for me as well good to go just one in case. brand new pair one other broken in exactly pair. that he will have my old old pair that i've just moved from and he will have a brand new pair as well right. uh one question that i've not asked yet right um how old are your shin pads i've not asked anyone this but you find footballers will stick with that yeah. same pair of shinies how old are your shin pads um first of all the pair of shin pads i wore on saturday i forgot my shin pads <laughs> I forgot. I forgot the football in these shin pads. Yeah, so I just bought my glute, my boots, and my gloves. All right. So I I did my warm up with you, and then I came in and I, put, I went to pull my sock on. And I was like, oh, no. I ain't got no shin pads. I ain't got no shin pads. So one of the lads had just um, uh, the lad that had just signed. Who is it? Um, that sit next to me when we get dressed. Billy. Billy. Yeah, Billy. Um, sorry, Billy. I knew it was Billy. Anyway, it's so hard to remember. Billy's so tall. Mate, though, it's, it's hard to. It's to so not hard. See him. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's so hard to remember like thirty <laughs> lads' names by the way and staff and stuff. It's so On the hard. First day. It's well hard, right? So anyway, Billy. But that's really poor. Thankfully, <laughs> <laughs> thankfully, Billy was in the changing rooms and um, I went. Uh, like the camera crew were there and um, and like the manager was there and I went shit I ain't got no shin pads and like so the gaffer's pissing himself laughing the film crew were pissing themselves laughing and then Billy's there and he's laughing he went mate I had to go to JD Sports <laughs> yesterday and get these horrible little things and it's like they were like a junior sized shin pad they're about that big tiny yeah Adidas a tenner or something they were right I went mate, can I borrow them? And he went, oh, of course you can, mate. Yeah, sweet as a nut. I went, I'll borrow them because you probably won't be coming on anyway. Oh. <laughs> I'm did, really joking, Billy. I didn't did say that. Did you see his bastard yeah. pair of new trainers as no, well? No, what oh, were they? a brand new pair of Nikes on, mate. He had the dustiest pair on on the Thursday and on Friday he's rolled in with a new pair of Air Zooms, lad. They didn't get hung up, though. I saw something hung up in the changing rooms yeah, on Friday. Yeah, my combat. They were that, your mate. naughty combats, yeah, weren't they? Yeah. Naughty khaki green yeah. Adidas combats. I know who I'm coming for, Ben Toza. They weren't me, mate. It's not my game, all right? Yeah. I'm just saying, I'm putting out it's not my game. I'd never hang anything up, nah, all right? You can't insult anyone's gear. Um, <laughs> it's good, it's good, it's good. Uh, so anyway, yeah, I used his shin pads for the game. They're perfect, absolutely fine. But my shin pads that I'm going to actually bring in uh, for, for the game on Saturday, I've had since... Yeah, I've had them since the kids were born. So you know that guy who was going around getting yeah, them made proper, yeah, personalized nice. and all that kind of thing. So I've got the kids' names on one, the kids, the my, my boys' name on one, my girls' name on the other, date of birth, and that's about it, really. It's all they've got on them. But yeah, they've been my shin pads since, well, yeah, since the kids were born, what 14, 14 years ago. Yeah, nice. Uh, any uh, strappings? T- no, nothing. You don't take any fingers up nothing. or nothing, do you? Absolutely nothing, mate. Absolute. Zero. I don't. I, I Caveman. I, yeah, I don't like playing with anything under. I don't like ankle strappings. I don't like anything really. To be fair. Oh, fair play. Yeah. Uh, can I ask you about your pre-match routine? What you eat? Yeah. A lot of people, goalkeepers out there, all ask, "What's a, a usual goalkeeper's pre-match meal?" Because ours is so different than an outfielder. Um, do you know what? I'll, I'll be honest with you on this, this one, actually, because when I was at Watford, the last four years, we stay in a hotel the night before every single game, right? So you even if if you're, if you're at home, you wake up on, this, on the match day on the Saturday morning and you have to go down for breakfast at nine o'clock. You have to. It's compulsory. And it's just, it's normal healthy stuff. It'll be eggs. It'll be whatever. It'll be porridge. And it's just boring. I hate it. It's boring, right? So Saturday before the game, um, I had a bacon sandwich and it was belting, Yeah. <laughs> Belting, like I'm talking seven or eight rashes of bacon, tomato ketchup, belting. Because I think for a goalie, you the, the nutrition part for a goalie isn't important on a match Not day. Not at all, it, I agree. Yeah, it doesn't matter on a match day. It doesn't. In the week, it's really important because you, you've got to make sure you, you are what you are and you, you're eating properly and you're staying trim and all that. But on a match day, dig in, mate. Absolutely dig in. Do what you want, eat what you want. I'd have, like on Saturday, I'm looking forward to waking up in my own bed Saturday morning and I'm going to have a massive plate of like cheese and beans on toast, something like that. Loads of ketchup. Uh, as long as I'm happy and I've got a full belly, that'll do me. It doesn't matter. See, like you love a full belly. I love an empty belly. Do, oh no, I've got to have a full belly, man. Yeah. Full belly, coffee out my head yeah, as well. Yeah, see, that's what I'm caffeine out me nothing caffeine mate. out my nut I'll have I'll have as many coffee I'll have a coffee at half time yeah. I'll have a coffee just before the game um, we had a lovely little uh, coffee in a mug the other day yeah nice, nice mug that, that mate yeah. isn't it? I'm, gonna to, I'm gonna have to take one home mate. Yeah. if you can you get me one yeah, yeah I might just nick one of these that nah, you've got in here actually. I'm getting you one personalised mate so you've got your own oh that'd be lovely yeah, yeah thank you um, and then also um, I noticed on the coach's desk that they had a box of mini eggs 
uh, not mini eggs, what they call cabbage cream eggs. The, the, the box <laughs> Chucking of, into a cream so egg. So I had a cabbage cream egg at half time um, <laughs> and a cup of coffee, mate. It's golden, absolutely golden. Like I say, for a goalie, I think just as long as you're happy, yeah, Good to go. doesn't matter. Right, I want to talk about your England clear, uh, career. Boom. Eight games. Yeah. Unbelievable achievement, isn't it? I'll take that, mate. I will. Considering how late you came into football and yeah. then coming through non-league to then move and progress. But to even the, some of the goalies that I was up against, you know, for, so we're talking about Joe Hart and his pomp here. And I've got to say, for me, Joe Hart is, is probably the best goalie I've seen up close. Like, seeing him in training, he's just, he's a, he is a genuine cat, mate. A genuine cat, like springing everywhere. Just to throw weights around every, well, Mate, in the mate. gym. Like when we went to, we were in Brazil and it was me, Fraser Forster and, and uh, Joe Hart. And we just had the best time, mate, because it's us three together and we all get on so well. And we would just, we would go in the gym every single day. We'd go and play golf like pretty much most days and we'd always be together doing something. Um, but yeah, seeing him up close and personal when he was in his pomp was just a sight to behold, mate. Yeah. Honestly, he was incredible. Stood in the way of more caps for you, though. Yeah, but that's what I don't mind mate yeah. it doesn't bother me it's genuinely because I, I get to see it and you go fair enough if that's fair the enough level. mate if that's a level fair enough mate i'll have that all day long um and he's a wicked lad mate joe is absolutely top so you can't there's no way you can begrudge him absolutely anything so um now eight cats but i'm buzzing with it, mate like i said I, I moved house last week actually so i've got a load of stuff that came from storage a load of stuff from the old house that's been in the attic or whatever and i can finally i've got a bit of space now to actually look at it all so i've, I've got there's loads of boxes of mate some of the memorabilia stuff i've got by the way is Get a phenomenal museum in the west wing mate, it's yeah? phenomenal yeah and the east wing as well <laughs> I could do as well just in case I've got too much but honestly I've got so much stuff mate it's wicked all my caps are there nice. like loads of England shirts loads of like signed shirts from the, the England lads um, I've got so we, we in that World Cup we played um, we played Ur uh, Uruguay and Italy in the first game Uruguay in the second game and we lost both games 2-1 um, but I've got some serious shirts mate serious shirts so in that fir the first game against Italy Perlo, it's when Perlo was pulling strings. It's that clip, you'd have seen it. You know the one where he hits a free kick and it wobbles so yeah, much, yeah, hits yeah. the crossbar, ball goes behind the goal, and Joe Hart's going, Give it a ball! <laughs> Give it a ball! He's losing he's his shit. The, yeah, he's the kicking the board. Yeah. Losing his shit. Um, so that was when Perlo was in his pomp. He was crucifying England. He really was. How did you get that shirt? So me and Fraser, like, because we we're on the bench, we were the first ones in back into the changing rooms, first ones to get changed, and first ones to get back on the coach. But as we're walking out the changing rooms, um, their kit man is, has walked like this little Italian man has walked and he's got all these like Italy shirts to, to walk to our change rooms to swap with all our kit men nah. to just swap them over so as we, yeah so Yoink. literally that it was quite literally that so as we're walking out Fraser saw I think it was Cassano's shirt Antonio Cassano's shirt was on the top right and he quite literally jumped over me grabbed it big claw and, yeah big paw big claw and he just carried on running and as he lifted it off, and he had already gone by this point, Perlows was there. Perlows was just sitting there, match worn, dirty, sweaty. And I'm like, oh, you dickhead. And he kind of tried to turn, and I went, ah, good. And <laughs> pulled it straight off the top. And Buffon didn't actually play in the game, um, but his shirt was in there as well because they had an orange shirt that game. And I could see it in there. So I just went, oh, and, uh, uh, and I, uh, this this guy's like, what are you lads doing here? He's trying to say, kit man, kit man. I'm going, yeah, one second, mate. So I lifted it up got Buffon's out as well oh. so I got Perlo Buffon the next game Uruguay exactly the same thing literally exactly the same thing me and Fraser first out walking out of the changing room kit man there load of shirts yeah and um, I, I was at the front at this time here and uh, Luis Suarez had just ripped us a new one on the pitch he was beautiful honestly he was absolutely beautiful it was Luis Suarez in his pomp Liverpool proper. pomp yeah proper um and Luis Suarez's top was on was on the top of the pile. Again, sweaty, match warm, incredible. I was just like, oh my God, grab that bad boy. And because like I didn't play in the game, so I feel a bit bad about taking them. No, not really. Don't. I don't. Not no, at I don't. All. I don't, not at all. But I feel like I had to hide it. I had to hide the shirt. So it Did up you? the top and then didn't say a word, mate. Didn't say a dicky no, bird like to anybody. No, I'd have been like the seagull finding Nemo, man. Yeah, mine, 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 mine. mine. <laughs> but Fraser saw me doing it and he was like, you're a dickhead, you're a shit. Like, and he's trying to get one anyway. And I was like, don't tell anyone. He was like, of course I'm not going to tell anybody. So all the lads are getting on, they're fuming. We've just been knocked out. Like, But I'm secretly thinking, geez, I've just got Suarez's shirt. I've got a Perlo shirt. And then I played in the last game as well. I played in the um, the Costa Rica game. Um, so, yeah, I can, I can say I'm happy, mate. I'm, I managed to play in a World Cup for my country. Eight appearances, eight caps. Um, that'll do me. Superb, that, mate. Right, I want to get on to... Probably your biggest passion of date, mate, the Fozcast uh, and the cycling GK. Yeah, boom. 
but both. I've loved speaking to you so far about it. Obviously, in like we said in the car, picking travel, the brain, that, mate. I love it. Yeah, it's mad. How it like our, our worlds have like collided like this. And yeah, it's so good for me to learn off you and that. What was uh, your inspiration? What was the, like the starting process of the cycling GK? Yeah. Um, the cycling GK was when it started when COVID was on us and we were we were just about to go back for um for, for football because nobody knew, did they? Nobody knew how long we we're gonna we're be off all for. In limbo, exactly. Right? You just there was no time scale or no time frame. So you're keeping yourself fit, but you don't know how fit to keep yourself. You don't know you don't know what to do. Um so I was thinking maybe start a YouTube channel about, I don't know, like doing some drills at home, goalkeeping drills at home or even just out on my bike, like I like, chatting gump basically chatting rubbish and i could show kids what sessions they could do at home um and then we we basically got the call to say listen you're back in you're back in so i was like okay maybe i should just show a bit of what goes on behind the scenes during covid at football because it's new for everyone yeah, isn't it so new. so new different changing rooms separate changing rooms masks everywhere it was so weird um and then pr before we knew it the games had started so i'm thinking I might start doing like I didn't even think about football vlogs or anything. I didn't think I just thought I just thought one day like should I just stick it in the goal? Should I just take it out with me, put it in the goal, and just see what see it what looks happens. like, see what happens, yeah. So at this point I already had the channel set up. Um I didn't really know what I was gonna be doing with it, but I had the name the Cycling GK. Um and I I, I <laughs> actually the, we were playing at home to Luton and I took it out of me for the first half but I shit myself Did I you, absolutely yeah. shit I myself to know that. yeah shit myself and I thought I can't do it I can't I can't do it I can't put it in the goal but then second half so we're one nil up in the first half second half um I took it out of me again. I thought, nah, sod it. I'm doing it. I did it. So I stuck it in the goal for the second half. And then it wasn't until I got home, um, I looked at some of the footage and I was thinking, this is really nice. Like, this is, I don't think I've ever seen this before. I haven't seen this angle before or how you communicate with your players and all that. I've never seen it. So anyway, we had the editor and he sort of chopped it all up and made it into a vlog style like video. Um, but we put it out and God, mate, the reaction to it, boom, boom. It was just like, whoa, you've done something. You've actually done something. Um, and that was it. That's how it started. So then I started turning it into proper match vlogs where it would start on the Friday and I would be like Friday morning, film a bit of training, yeah, arrive for training, film a bit of training, show the lads, introduce the lads, the people behind the scenes, the physios, the kit men, the, the bus driver, whatever it is. Um, and then obviously GoPro and the goal on a Saturday. And then it's like afterwards, win, lose or draw. It's like, well, you know we tried we gave it everything blah 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 and that's it that's how the cycling gk was because it's so brave to start off yeah doing it as the first person to do it yeah you do open yourself up to so much criticism massive mate did you get a lot of stick at the start uh no definitely not at the start at the start it was because we we're in the championship and we're winning games it was i found uh, what i found is if you're winning you can do whatever you want yeah, yeah. you can you can do whatever you want if you're losing you can't even dare dream of doing it. Don't you dare put that GoPro in the gold. Don't you dare release that video. Yeah. I've actually got a few videos that I didn't release because we got pumped. Yeah. So I was like, can't put that one out, lad. So you just have to leave just it. Got yeah. It. But I've still got them. I might do some special releases or something somewhere down the line. Um, but yeah, that's that's kind of how it felt to me is 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 when we were winning, cool. But then when you're losing. So when we got promoted to the Premier League, we started losing games all over the shop yeah you're in the Premier League you're playing against the big boys and that's when it became a problem so at first they were buzzing for it they wanted me to do it you know they want the 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 spotlight shown on them and then as soon as the fans started getting a bit annoyed because we're losing you know what fans are like they feel like they feel like I'm not taking it seriously or properly yeah, professionally yeah. and it couldn't be further from the truth but I also understand though that West West Brom fans, Watford fans, Wrexham fans, they have an emotional attachment to their football club. They spend a lot of money traveling around the world to see this football club. So I can understand that if they feel somebody, a player, has slighted their team, they'd take it personally, and they're not they're not short in uh, letting you know on social media either. Right. Uh, I wanted to ask you obviously about the podcast because obviously the Cycling GK then evolved into the podcast and football filling. Yeah. Like it's proper, like a staple now. Yeah. You've got your like fully battering the shows and it's class, mate. I love it, like, mate. I love it. I do. I'm the same as you. Like I, we we said this in the car, didn't yeah. we, the other day? We said I we I can chat to anyone. I think I'm a world class waffler. Like I can pick any of you. I could go and sit in the car with you and I'll find something to talk not, about. Not ben. 
not a Ben today. <laughs> he looks hard work, to be fair. But I do. I feel like I could find something, some common ground somewhere yeah. to talk about something. Um, so yeah, we yeah, so, so we started the podcast, and then like I wanted to do at first, I wanted to do a bit, a bit of YouTube, a bit of something, a bit of sports people, but generally a, it'll be a sports podcast. Um, but I quickly noticed that people just buzz off the football ones. You know, if you for me, I'm the same as you. Probably if you get a goalkeeper on, oh, it's they're, the they're the best ones ever. They are. They're so easy to do. Oh, mate. It's, it it's is. Like, you just you talk b- crap, b- bouncing off each yeah. other like that. It just comes so naturally. Um, and then we, we like you know we we do. I, we did a one with Robbie Williams, like say David David Seaman, um, Ian Wright, some of these big boys, Aaron Ramsdale, Casper Schmeichel. They just it's so good, mate. I love I'll doing those it. Names up later. I know, mate. yeah. Yes. Sorry, yeah. I'm sorry. All but over they, the floor. I love doing them, mate. I love it. I love doing them. Like even like a couple of weeks ago, we had Alfie Mawson on. So Alfie Mawson just had to recently retire from football. What 20, story? Though? 29 years old, out of nowhere, mate. I mean, out of nowhere, goes to see a specialist. His, his knees are hurting him, and the specialist says, "That's it, mate. You're gonna have to hang your boots up. Simple as that. Don't even do run. Don't even go for a run ever again. Don't get on a treadmill. You're gonna have to retire." And he, it's kind of trying to find out how that feels because I you, unless you're in that position nobody knows no how idea. that feels nobody no, has an idea of how that feels like what do you do now what's the next steps do you know what I mean and even in his head because it's so fresh he's like I don't know yet I really don't know yet you're getting told off a specialist you might never pick your kids up again if you play another football match exactly that and like that's the decision that hits home got. then yeah exactly that really that. hits home if then. your kid wants a kick about in the back garden oh no I mean, you can't do it oh that would break your heart wouldn't it it would break your heart. So that's what I mean. Just just trying to find anybody with an interesting story who's been on a bit of a journey or might have a, like witnessed adversity or something like that. But yeah, it's good, mate. I do. I, I buzz off it. I really do. What's next for What's next for Ben Foster? Um, Crack America. Oh, I don't know about the car. You've, you've, hint, you've hinted about obviously joining an American team. Yeah. But I think like obviously the podcast has become so popular yeah. as well like surely there's space in america to, we, we, to expand we had a few offers to go and and play out there actually end of and literally the end of last season i had a really good offer from atalanta united to go out and play there uh, brad guzan's a goalie actually he had just done his achilles just ruptured his achilles and we finished our last game was on a sunday i took all the cycling gk lads all the the editors and all the staff and all that out to mallorca for like four days as a bit of a well done a bit of a come on let's have a nice time um and on the very first day, the Monday, I got a call from Richard Lee, super agent, <laughs> saying, Ben, um, at Atlanta, uh, they've on the phone. They're wondering if you would want to go and sign for them. So I even got to the point where I had a Zoom call with Carlos Bocanegra. You remember him? Yeah, Fulham? of course. Yeah. He, he's like their, I don't know, director or whatever, director of football or stuff. So we had a little call and um, even he was like, listen, like we're, we're up for it, mate. We, we, we are, we'd allow you to come and do like your GoPro and the goal and all Crack that. On. But it was... We need you tomorrow, basically. Do you want to come out? You'll have to come out tomorrow. Brad's just done his Achilles. You're going to have to come out straight away. I was thinking, oh, for God's sake, give me a few seconds to breathe. Like, do you know what I mean? So that was just a bit too close. So, yeah, maybe something like that. Maybe. I I've, I've, I think that what we're learning in this world is, like, you can never say never. If, like, say, once you've been retired for nine months, if somebody said you'd have gone and played football again on Saturday, I'd have gone, no chance, no chance. So anything can happen, mate. That's the beauty of it. The beauty of what you do, the Cycling GK YouTube channel and podcast, it can take you absolutely anywhere right uh, finally right any advice for any goalkeepers what's the one thing that you throughout your career have carried with you and it helped you um the best bit of advice honestly as a goalkeeper is to the the sooner you can be comfortable in your own skin of who you are as a person yeah is then you'll be able to be a much better goalkeeper i promise you that yeah don't overthink anything about goalkeeping like the the worst thing you can do is so this sounds. This might sound like unprofessional to some people, right? But you know, before the game on Saturday, they they've got this like huddle. Is it the huddle yeah, thing all, yeah. where they'll send you all the clips and yeah. stuff like that? I will never watch that <laughs> stuff. I promise you, I won't. I uh, throughout my whole career, right? I'm just texting the gaffer. Oh, yeah, I know. Yeah, I don't want to watch <laughs> any clips of any footballer doing anything. I promise you, I don't because. I think it would just get in your head a little bit. You'll start to it. overthink it. And I'm I'm very much a, a, a thing of when you step on the pitch on a Saturday, everything is just up in the air. It is. As a goalie, everything's up in the air. You have to deal with what you see in front of you there and then. And that's the way I, I learned to be a better goalie is just do what comes naturally to you. Because when you're when you're training, like on a Friday, on a Thursday, you're smiling, ain't you? You're having yeah, a nice time. Good. Autopilot, mate. It's so easy. It's nice. You're catching welly balls. Like you shock yourself sometimes. But balls get wellied from split second, turn, bang. And it's like, 
just comes so naturally, doesn't it? If you can replicate that on a Saturday afternoon and not think about anything, black out all the noise, block out all the noise, and just get back to autopilot, you'll smash it, mate. Uh, and get good service. Your service is lovely. Yeah, I wanted this compliment. Honestly, mate, your nice, service is lovely. Yeah. It lo you know, I know you rinse AD for his service, yeah? Oh. But Monday, he was serving, right? Yeah. So you had a little day off. day off Monday, yeah? You like chill, your right? day off yesterday. You chill, right? Um, I did have a day off yesterday. I was working at least. I had, I had a couple of days of. I was on the golf course, mate. Oh, mate. Nice weather was good as yeah, well. Yeah, it was real it? good. Yeah. Um, so AD, Aiden, AD Davis, Aiden Davison, who's who's a goalie coach at Wrexham, he had to do the serving on Monday. And the day I signed, the second I signed, he went, "Watch out for AD's service. It's dog shit. It's brutal." <laughs> Me and Rory straight yeah, away were on him, weren't we? It's so bad. Um, so anyway, he was doing the serving um, on Monday, May. It was decent, yeah. double decent. He was half volleying them, drilling them into that little slot, mate, relentlessly. Nice. I was so sockets, happy with yeah. it. I was so happy with nice. it, seriously. Well played, AD. Proved yeah. me wrong, mate. Yeah, he did, mate. He saved them for you. Yeah, He's I waited, think he does, waited yeah. all season just I'd, for you I'd to like to up. think he woke up Tuesday morning stiff as a board because he never serves, does he? He, he won't serve when we're training. He didn't serve when I trained. No, he saved it for me, mate. Yeah, Sorry, nice. far. Right, that's all I've got time for today, but... Ben, you've been an unbelievable guest. Thanks for finally coming. No, nah, pleasure, mate. Being a teammate now. That's brilliant. Let's I go, love doing this, Let's mate. go and finish the season off, mate. Damn right. Damn exactly. right. Up the town. This has been the Yours Mine Away podcast with me, Mark Howard, Ben Foster. Teamwork. Ben yes. Foster, everyone. Cheers, lads. Thank you. What a save from Mark Howard.